Hello students, I hope you are all doing well. Today we're going to explore technique, wet on dry, wet into wet, allowing things to bleed, and building up of glazes. I'm going to demonstrate by painting two of my favorite things, watermelon and mangoes. The first thing I'm going to do is get a little tiny bit of a yellowy green on my brush and I'm just going to paint a nice big circle. And then I added a little bit of water and I'm just going around that just to get my shape. So when you use your brush, you get a nice organic shape, which is a little bit nicer than um, being rigid and obeying the lines of a pencil and filling stuff in. So I'm going to put more color on the bottom than the top because I want to start building form already. I put water down right here because I, I want it. I want it to stay pretty light right there. Gonna get a little bit more color. Especially around the edge. So that's gonna start giving it form. And it's wet into wet, so I'm gonna get this wet. So I have that evenly distributed. Looks like there's kind of a, a line right there, so I'm gonna get rid of that. Now it looks like there's a highlight there. I'm gonna take this brush, which has a really long, really long hair, and I'm loading it. This, this paint is a little bit greener, and this is a liner, so it has a lot of paint, but it makes a thin line. I'm going to let this bleed. So this is wet and this is wet. I'm just going to let this bleed and make the lines in here. And I'm going to kind of follow the contours. And however long I hold this down is how much pigment is going to go. I could probably even get a this one is, this is a liner too, but it's a little bit fatter, so it's gonna, it's gonna let more pigment drop now. I can go back over the same lines. And you can see, even though I'm done, painting right there, it keeps moving, and that's really kind of beautiful. So I let my watermelon dry, and what I found is that I have some spots where the blue and the yellow were kind of separating, and it looks, it looks, makes it look really interesting. So I kind of, at this point, evaluate Oh, what do I want to do now? I know one thing I want to do is I want to start building form. And another thing I want to do, I think I, I, I want more green on here. And I want, I want to tweak up that, that action that I already got started. So this time, I'm going to come in with a little neutral down here and a little green up here and, and build more form. So how I get my neutral is I take some of this green and I mix it with some red and I get a nice a nice warm brown so I'm going to come in here and just pull that around right there. I'm going to switch to a bigger brush so I don't have to work so hard. I added a little bit water, a little bit of water so that's a little bit lighter and I'm going to come in here Ooh, it looks like it's staining a little bit. That means it's just kind of staying put and it's not moving. So I might be using, I might have used a red that stains, which will make my job a little bit harder. I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to this green. So, so this layers, 
going to have a, 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 a deeper a deeper shade on it and I'm still keeping my form so you can see it's starting to look starting to look a bit rounder now and I'm gonna pull a little bit more of this brown right here so I went outside the box and I just pushed that off with my finger so that's that's starting to get there. I could probably push that a little bit further. I could go with a with a dark green instead of brown. So that's kind of doing it for me. So now I'm going to work on a mango and I'm using there there's multiple watercolor techniques. There's the, the dark to light wash, there's glazing, there's wet on dry, there's wet into wet, and I'm kind of doing all of them when I'm working on this mango. So first of all, I painted wet on dry in order to get this, and I have a dark to light wash because it's dark over here and it's light over here. So I put my pigment down, then I put water down, I blended them together, and then I added more water and that pushed the pigment to the edge, and that's why I have that dark line there. So this is dry and I'm gonna come back over it. So that's actually glazing. I'm gonna, this is gonna stay exactly where it is, but I'm gonna put color on top of it so I'm glazing. And the technique that I'm using to put the color on top of it is going to be wet into wet. So instead of putting the pigment down first, I'm going to put water down and get everything nice and wet because I want my, when I drop my paint in, I want it to bleed. So I got kind of a puddle right here. I think that looks good though. So I want my, I want this to be nice and wet. And I'm just gonna drop that in here. Cause that's what mangoes kind of do, don't they? And maybe I want a little bit more intense here. Get my color a little bit more intense. And so it's just gonna keep, it's just gonna keep moving. And I'm gonna come in here and get some, some red and really load my brush up. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Play with it a little bit. So I'm using opposite colors. So if I start blending them together, what's gonna happen? I'm gonna get some neutral down here. So in this case, that neutral is kind of working for me because it's reading a shadow. and that's giving me some form. I'm gonna get everything wet again, but I'm gonna use this Aussie Gold, and we're gonna see how that changes it. So the Aussie Gold is kinda of acting like a neutral. So did, you can see it gives it a little bit more form. <gasps> Look at what I did. So what do you do when you do that? Just lift it up. Boop, boop, 
Ooh. Okay. And try not to splash so much when you're painting. Now I'm going to drop this green back in here. And I think I think I'm just going to let that be. I really love the um, Aussie gold and the green kind of blending together. So this is going to keep moving. And I think it's going to turn out really nice when it dries. So I'm pretty happy with that. So here's our finished product. I did one more glaze of neutral on each one of these on the bottom before I allowed them to dry. I did that so that they would have a little bit more weight. So I hope this gave you ideas about how to use different techniques, how to use them together, how to play and experiment and have fun.